Hello everyone, uh, my name is uh, Darius and I'm going to be speaking about oh, my talk's called From Futures to Cat's Effect. Uh, this is supposed to be a gentle but pragmatic introduction uh, to Cat's Effect, assuming some familiarity with uh, futures. Uh, I'm going to give a couple of examples of how you go from futures to I.O. and some things that Cat's Effect makes easy for you. So, uh, we have futures. Futures are great. Uh, they're in the core, so you get them for free. They're pretty much uh, one of the first things you learn when you uh, switch to Scala. They're non blocking, they compose magically, so you can, uh, you can flat map, you can uh, use four comprehensions. That's all great. Uh, also, uh, they evaluate eagerly and they memoize results. So, but that, that does come with a couple of issues, like, you know, are, are they really monads? I mean, they're not, there are cases where they're not referentially transparent, uh, and they can break um, identity laws, monadic laws, and that can make your code a little bit harder to, uh, to reason about. Quick word on referential transparency. transparency. Uh, I'm sure most of you have seen uh, this example before. Um, but this is an example where we create a future, we have a side effect, uh, we assign that to a value, um, we run that value twice, and what happens? The side effect gets evaluated once, uh, this breaks referential transparency. Um, what we do want from non blocking library is uh, something that's referentially transparent, that often goes hand in hand with uh, lazy, laziness, and um, that allows us to reason about the code um, where our, with our assumptions holding. There are obviously a bunch of different uh, libraries that do uh, this. Uh, Monix Tasks, uh, ZIO, and Cat's Effect are uh, some of them. Um, I think the idea of this talk is not necessarily to use Cat's Effect, but you know, look at that, look at the others, uh, see which ones you like and which ones work best for you. Um, so one of the first things I look at when uh, we want to use a new library is, is it supported in the wild? And uh, Cat's Effect has a fair bit of support. I mean, it's part type level and the whole Cat's ecosystem. So, you know, you get uh, adapters for Doobie, uh, HTTP4S, Pure Config, STTP. These are kind of familiar names. Uh, there's, there's quite a few more in the README if you want to see what else uh, you, what other uh, libraries supported out of the box. Um, so yeah, a few words about uh, what Cat's Effect is. Uh, Cat's Effect um, uh, was born uh, a little later uh, than Cat's was. It lives, it's a separate library, uh, but it lives in the same ecosystem. So the mission statement is that it aims to provide a standard I.O. type for the Cat's ecosystem. Um, so I.O. Uh, suspends uh, side effects and operations in general, so you can run them uh, when you want. And as I said before, they're lazy. Uh, there are, so often people say Cat's Effect IO. Uh, there are actually a number of type classes in Cat's Effect. IO is one of them. Uh, IO is actually a pretty good entry point uh, for uh, Cat's Effect. Um, it implements uh, the other type classes. Um, it is purely mutable and it is referentially transparent. So, how to create an I.O. object. Um, so you have a future uh, which has a side effect, how to transform that into an I.O. It's quite easy really, you just replace future with I.O. and that's the same. Obviously the difference is future is eager, so once you create it, that will start running. Uh, I.O. however will not, it will just suspend it and then you have to explicitly trigger it. Uh, there are several ways uh, to create I.O. objects, I'm going to just present two. Another one is I.O. pure. Uh, this is when uh, there are, um, you already have a calculated value, this is blocking, but uh, it means that you, you base, this code gets executed immediately. So it's useful for things like this when you have a constant. Um, so how do you convert from a future? Uh, this is um, this is quite useful uh, when you have, say, a library that doesn't support I/O, but you can build an abstraction layer around that. Uh, around that, uh, if you want an I/O interface, uh, things to notice here is that that the future is wrapped inside an I/O, so that it doesn't get executed, and uh, then the from future takes care of the rest, and you suddenly have an I/O from future. 
Um, race. So uh, IO has a function called race. Um, this example is from the Cat's Effect documentation. Um, you simply pass it uh, two IOs and uh, the first one that completes uh, will cancel the other one. Um, so you, know, you, don't, you, don't, you don't have to wait for them to finish and uh, it's a little bit more efficient. Um, things that are new here is timer. Timer is simply a scheduler in the Cat's Effect uh, library and context shift. If you're not familiar with context shift, context shift is uh, what uh, execution context is for futures. Context shift is for uh, IO. So it, uh, it deals with like thread management, uh, which threads are actually called fiber, uh, while well, the equivalents are fiber in uh, Cat's Effect. Um, so another useful bit of code, uh, handle error width. Um, this is also from the Cat's documentation, Cat's Effect documentation. Uh, retry with back off. Uh, this allows you to retry the code uh, with an exponential back off. Um, new things here, and all it takes is an IO. Um, so yeah, IO sleep. Sleep does what it says. Uh, the star greater than, if you're not familiar with that, that's cat syntax for flat map and ignore the input. Uh, so you can chain IOs uh, without having multiple nested IOs. Uh, and then we have uh, raise error. Raise error is just what you do when you uh, when you want to wrap your uh, exception, uh, when you wrap an IO around your exception. Um, so this is uh, an example of try uh, finally written in kind of your normal uh, Java syntax. Um, so try finally is only meant for synchronous execution. So it can't be used for abstractions uh, capable of asynchrony. Um, another issue with it is that if, uh, if a try fails and your finally code gets executed, if your finally code gets executed and that fails as well, that throws an exception, then your stack trace will actually contain your finally exception and your try exception will be uh, swallowed. Um, in um, Cat's effect, the equivalent for that is called bracket. So bracket takes two blocks of code, the first one being the thing you want to do, and the second one being the equivalent of the finally. And this behaves, uh, this works in an asynchronous uh, uh, context, and uh, also uh, it, it behaves better in terms of the exception that is thrown. If they both uh, throw exceptions, is the bit in the try, not the bit in the finally, but the bit in the finally does get logged, so you don't lose track of that either. Uh, this is just an example that I found um, helpful when we started using I.O. Uh, where, so you have, uh, you're writing some setup code for your test and uh, that setup uh, has a feature. Now this could be boilerplate code, this could be um, code that you, know, you have not written, but you know, maybe comes from somewhere else. But if you uh, just run that code and you forget that it's a future and need to wait for it to be complete, that can result in intermittent failures in terms of that can sometimes complete and sometimes not. Uh, this is not something that happens when you uh, use IOs because IOs are lazy, so you will always get the failure uh, if you forget to uh, wait, if you forget to run it, uh, and obviously if you do run it, then you will always get the pass. So it can save you a bit of time when you're uh, when you're developing as well. So that's it in my talk. Um, thanks for listening. Uh, most of these examples are from the Cat's Effect docs. Uh, have a look at them. Uh, they're really good. Uh, they're very concise. Uh, this really only scratches the surface. There's a lot more type classes. There are thread management you can do. Uh, there's many important things. Uh, and that's a link to it. Thank you.